Radio Live's Radio Live's Rural Exchange Programme with Carter's Tyres from 5 till 7 Saturday and Sundays. We're joined now uh, by co-host of Rural Exchange, Sarah Perriam. G'day, Sarah. Good morning, Duncan. Hey, these dung beetles, um, there was a, I think there was a piece on the project last night of the dung beetles. Are these the stink bomb dung beetles? Well, I mean, what do they do? What's They're the big clever. deal? They're they clever are. little things, aren't mm. they? Um, so there's a first non-native release of non-native dung beetles released um, uh, in the Wairarapa, and uh, there's going to be an example as part of Fonterra's Open Gates program. This is happening across the country where yeah. people can go on and have a look at the amazing environmental work and all the really innovative different ways we're learning how to deal with our... Um, manure. Mm. Uh, what does the dung beetle do? So what it does is basically burrows through down to about 20 centimetres below the soil and it's basically like a rotary hoe. It's flipping it through, aerating the soil, which is helping with nutrient le- you know, management and uh, aerating and, and, and soil moisture retention, things like that. So a biological way of dealing with uh, uh, a problem that we, we're all facing. Because they're not the ones that you used to squash and they would stink. I mean, <laughs> they're, not, they're not those ones, are they? Uh, I don't believe so. Is that the marmorated stink bug that yes, we've that, all been trying to, to get rid of? Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a bit, a bit different. There's quite a few different bugs, but I'm not the bug man, so I'll okay. be able to tell you. This is an introduced species, very much like the stoat, the possum and the weasel. Oh, no, no, this is helpful. All right. Yes, because as you've just heard, it goes under the um, soil and goes round and round. There's no power being used. There's no emissions being sent out. That's what a great beetle. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, this is just multiple examples of different environmental uh, work that's going on on farms. And this particular property um, in Featherston, the uh, Kai Waiwai Dairies, you know, they've taken 600 kilos of nitrogen out of the soil by a huge, massive wetlands project. So it's a great opportunity. There's about 5,000 tickets were sold out in the Auckland region. Um, for people just really interested to get on farm and see for themselves. Can I just be um, a little bit sceptical for a second? Because, you know, there's all these people, oh, yeah, but you've, you've spent months and months cleaning up the farms and then in they come and yeah, that's the best version, of course. What do you say to those sceptics who say that? Uh, say, well, I mean, th- th- this has been going on for a very, very long time. Yes. It's just an inconvenient to uh, look at the truth sometimes because it doesn't uh, make the best headlines uh, and drive the right agenda sometimes. Uh, and so, you know, we certainly want to continue to say that we're all in this freshwater mission together. Um, dairy farmers are certainly uh, 100%, as you would know from, from your friends, um, you know, want swimmable rivers. Um, and so I, I really do strongly believe that um, this is of, of benefit for us in the long term to uh, our brand New Zealand for our trade and when 95% of our produce goes overseas we can't ignore that trade doesn't affect us all. Brilliant answer. What, um, if farmers want some of these dung beetles um, how do they get them from the market? Where's the market? Where are they being sold? Uh, I'm not 100% sure but I understand that there's on-farm trials um, that farmers can sign up to to be a part of. Uh, it's part of the Greater Wellington Regional Council we're doing this initiative. So. Good stuff Sarah. Lovely to see you. Thank, Thank you so much Sarah Perriman. It is um, uh, Rex, which is what we call the programme on Saturday, Sundays 5 till 7am brought to you by Carter's Tyres.